Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Jesus Rodriguez from Orinoco Tribune, and today we have the pleasure to interview Oli Vargas from Causa Chu News in Bolivia. Uh, we encourage all of you to read Causa Chu News because it gives you update in English language about political events in Latin America and Bolivia. Uh, and 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 they are an independent independent media like us. And I wanted to take advantage that I was doing an interview on another topic with with Oli, and 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 in parallel uh, this whole um, census, uh, you know, crisis in Cochabamba was happening in Santa Cruz. Sorry, was happening, and. Uh, and I wanted to ask him, what is all this mess, Oli? I mean, what is happening? And why is these crazy people doing a big deal out of the date of the census? Let me tell you something. I can believe anything that you tell me, because here in Venezuela, we have, have issues with the census also and right-wingers. I remember a few, a couple of years ago, right-wingers in Venezuela created like a big... Uh, commotion um, because the government was planning to do a census this year and they were saying that the, the the people from the census was going to enter the house and occupy the house and expropriate the houses and crazy things like that and they have been saying also that uh, when Chavez was, was in office a few years ago that a, a lighting program I mean a, a program that we had in Venezuela to change light bulbs in, in, in inside the houses uh, those light bulbs had microphones and cameras that spy for the regime <laughs> so whatever you tell me I will believe it <laughs> well, thank you Jesus and uh, everyone at Orinoco Tribune and yeah there's been uh, what I would call a, a boss's lockout in the city of Santa Cruz um, I must stress it's only in that part of the country, not in any other part of the country, led by Fernando Camacho, who also was one of the leaders of the coup in 2019. And uh, essentially, the issue revolves around what should be a, just a sort of technical issue that doesn't, um, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't elicit much of uh, a response from people. But essentially, there's supposed to be a national census this year. Uh, however, due to the pandemic and the fact that in the government of Añez, they didn't do any of the preparation work. Um, and that has meant that it's not ready to, to be done uh, yet. Like the, the, so the map of the, of the cartografico of the, of the country is not completed, uh, things like this. So they decided to move it back to, to move it to 20, 2024. And this was done in a meeting with the governors of every department of Bolivia, except Santa Cruz, who didn't show up, although they were invited. And so this has the agreement of the whole country, except for Santa Cruz. Um, part of this, they say, is because Santa Cruz has uh, grown in the past few years. So if the census uh you know reflects that then they'll get more money from central government but they're not the only region of the country that's grown a lot you know uh, for example the city of el alto has grown massively over the past few years because of the sort of economic boom in that city and they are not supporting these mobilizations in fact they support the date that the government has put um so it shows us that this is really an excuse that they're not actually worried about the, the census. They're just looking for an excuse to try and destabilize the government. Um, and I think there's even in Santa Cruz sections that, you know, want to create chaos and make an argument for, for separatism. And that in 2008, 2009, that was the demand of the, of the elites in Santa Cruz was uh, was separatism. So I think that is uh, the the core of the issue. Uh, and it's been going on now for a few days. Um, they say that they're going to continue on until the government brings forward the census. But I think what we'll see is, uh, you know, the police hopefully being able to intervene and 
uh, end this boss's lockout, which involves involves them, you know, uh, using uh, right wing protesters to block roads in the city and to stop cars from circulating. So that obviously one has person an die, economic right? impact too. One person die, right? Um, yes. Yeah, so if someone died in the town of Puerto Quijaro, which is outside mm -hmm. Santa Cruz, which is part of the department of Santa Cruz. And essentially they were a worker for the local mayor, the local authority there in the town. Um, and they were beaten with sticks by a mob that was trying to enforce this boss's lockout. Right. And I mean, that has Camacho's and two, mob, right? Yeah. Camacho's mob. And two people have been uh, arrested for that. Okay, it's good to know that. It's good to know that. And it's terrible that they has been, you know, trying to look for excuses to destabilize. This is not the first time that Camacho does that. And a few minutes ago, we were talking about Guaido here in Venezuela, that everyone wants to be in jail, but the guy is not in jail. I believe that maybe the same logic that Guaido, that makes Guaido not being in jail here in Venezuela, applies to Camacho in in Bolivia. Do you see the same? I mean, do you believe that because the guy have a lot of friends in Washington and and, and uh, a lot of connections, uh, the government have decided to keep him, you know, running uh, rock, disregarding the fact that the guy is a coup plotter? I don't think so. I don't think he has uh, since the coup. I don't think... The United States would see him as a viable option as someone um, that is capable of actually getting rid of the current government. Um, I think it's more to do with the fact that there's a lot of problems in the Bolivian justice system um, that haven't been resolved for many years, including the fact that the opposition itself has a huge connection to a lot of the people who work in the justice system to judges and uh, prosecutors and just the corruption in the justice system means that people with a lot of money which are people on the right can um, pay to, to to manipulate to bribe etc um, to try and get their own outcome in in uh, certain cases and I think part of how Camacho has managed to protect himself is because of that and you know that people in Bolivia are really angry about that and they want uh, big changes in the justice system to try and root out the the corruption to root out the 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 right wing sectors that are still within the justice system and that use the uh, judicial independence as an excuse to 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 keep themselves in power in the justice system I didn't know about that I mean, I know that there are problems, I mean, of justice and corruption everywhere. We in Venezuela have that, but but I believe that not in that, uh, in the same level that you are mentioning in Bolivia. Uh, um, but I was not aware of that, you know, issue in Bolivia uh, right now. And let, let me let me go back to the to the whole destabilization that I, I mean, this week that is ending, I mean, we published like two or three pieces because I was afraid because I was, I had the impression in Orinoco Tribune about the whole, about what was happening in Santa Cruz because I, I somehow smelled that they were trying to repeat the same script that we have seen before. And, and do you think that that's going to happen? I mean, do you think that they are going to be able this time to, to destabilize the government? I'm asking you this question out of pure curiosity and because I'm afraid that I don't want that to be repeated in Bolivia. No, I don't think it's going to be successful because it's so local. It's only in one part of the country and the rest of the country, even right wing uh you know governors and authorities they are in agreement with the government on this issue is only one area santa cruz which is uh you know wanting to cause these problems so they're very isolated and uh, you know when you're isolated at a national level you're not going to be able to make you're not going to be able to overthrow a government on this issue 
on this okay. issue. It's not. It's not going to happen. What they can do escalated is, and connected to violence and things like yeah. that that we are used to see in Venezuela, for example. Yeah, you know, using that something is local, some judicial decision is local, but then one day after the other, they manage to put tens of, I mean, hundreds of people in the street and they create violence. And from there, they, they spread the whole, you know, polvora all over. You don't see that coming. Yes. Um, I, not on this issue, but it okay. can create, I think, a general sense of chaos. And then perhaps on another issue, there'll be better place to be able to cause problems. And as well, they damage the, the economy through the the actions in Santa Cruz because Santa Cruz is one of the largest economies in the country. It's very important. A lot of the factories and things are based there. Um, and so to have that closed down, it affects the economy uh, badly. So maybe the you know one of their intentions is over a long term to try to damage the the economic growth in Bolivia. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point. And how is uh, uh, Luis Arce's uh, popularity right now? Do you have some numbers about it? Yeah, I think most of the the polls that have been carried out by, uh, especially by foreign agencies, have him about the same rate as when he won. He won with fifty five percent. Most polls are having approval rating of around 50%, um, which makes him one of the most popular presidents. I uh, think that I saw after, some graphics, yes. Uh, well, I think President Andres Manuel López Obrador in Mexico is always at the number one with mm -hmm. like 65 mm -hmm. 70% approval rating. Um, and Luis Arce doesn't have that level of popularity, but he does. I think he comes in about third or fourth in, in terms of most popular presidents in uh, Latin America. And I think that's partly because there has been uh, the return of economic growth and there's also been an absence of inflation. While the rest of the world is having a crisis of inflation, Bolivia has, you know, last year had an annual inflation of just over 1%. So, uh, we dream of that monthly in Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure. I'm sure well argentinians dream of it as well and they're yes, just I across mean. the border from us uh there's people in argentina there's some people in the north of argentina near bolivia they're actually putting their savings into bolivianos which is our local I, currency I read something that you wrote um, about that yes in Casa uh, their own currency is, is, is rapidly devaluing um and yeah it's it's That, that economic success has meant that people are, you know, are, have confidence in the government. So they have to, the opposition has to find these other excuses to attack the government. So now they've picked the issue of the national census. And there are no elections coming soon uh, and something that they, uh, that you might, you know, smell that is behind also this move from the right? No, There aren't any elections until 2025, um, okay. so a few years still. Uh, the local elections are always done just after the presidential election, so we had that last year, so we won't okay. have that until uh, 2026. Um, but yeah, but Bolivia is a, is a highly politicized country. Everything is politics. Everyone is very passionate. And it means that there's a sense of like a, a you know, uh, all year round campaign, even if it's not an election year, it feels like it could be an election year because just because of how politically charged everything is and how a politicized um, uh, the, the public discourse is. Mm -hmm. And listen, let me just to finish the interview, ask you about Casa Chun News. Are you doing well? Are you are you happy with the work? Uh, what are the plans for the next? Yeah, no, no. We, uh, I'd say we're in a transition phase because we've got a lot of big things that we're planning. Um, and this year, especially, we've been we've been planning that to be able to launch soon. So, well, we've launched uh, our new podcast uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, we're going to be doing as well weekly live streams on youtube we want to try and grow our audience on youtube in a big way um and 
uh, we haven't announced it yet, but for, for the World Cup, we're going to be launching a football show, but focused on the South <laughs> That's American fine. teams. That's so fine. we want to try and broaden out as well, you know, our, our audience, um, hopefully get some different types of people uh, following Kawasaki News. So we're, we're really excited for that and uh, a lot of big plans. That's fine. That's good to know. We are big uh, fans of your work here, Oli, and also the work <laughs> of Camila. Is, is, yes. Have you talked with her uh, about the yes, elections she's in, in Brazil? She's in uh, Brazil. Uh, on, on, on election night, we were doing, you know, sort of live uh, streams with her. We even got to see uh, Lula's acceptance speech with her. So that's uh that's really good with that coverage has been really important for us to to grow our audience as well yes absolutely absolutely un abrazo uh, uh oli and 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 again uh we are a big fan of your work and in, in, we encourage all our followers to also read causa news.com uh can you spell it oli because you are you might yes. be more go ahead because i know that uh, a lot of people got trouble <laughs> with the spelling Yes, it's a K A W S C H U N and news.com. Um, it means uh, Viva in, in Quechua. It comes from, I didn't comes know from that. Viva la Coca in, uh, in Quechua. That. It's, good it comes to know that. it's good to know that. Un abrazo, Oli, and thank you for accepting the invitation for the interview. We wish no, you the th best. Th thank you to Arena Contribuent and to Jesus. Um, I hope we can uh, speak again soon. Thank Un abrazo. You. Great, compa.